an event for kids. I want it to be an event for families. I want everybody to enjoy themselves. And I like a bit of edginess, uh, a bit of uh, um, uh, so, sort of sense of risk taking that's part of the fair, even here in the Bay Area. Um, we've had uh, a maker fair in Taiwan, and you know, just love their graphic look there. And then probably the biggest thing we had last year was a maker fair at the White House. Um, and uh, the president um, met Lindsay Lawler, who's in you know fiesta with his electric giraffe. Lindsay was here the first, very first year of Maker Fair, and as I joked with him, I said, that, you know, there's no freaking way he ever gets to the White House except that he worked 19 weekends to create a silly 19 foot tall giraffe that has electronics on it that people like to interact with. You know, it was a side project. He's a system administrator by day. It's something he did because he loves to do it, and that's who makers are. Um, this is a, an Italian maker fair. And uh, they're very proud that uh, Genuino <laughs> and Arduino come from Italy. And uh, it, it's, it's very interesting. Paris and uh, the World Maker Fair in New York. Um, and then Tokyo uh, was probably the last fair I went to in November last year. Um, and even this year, I've been to Cairo, Egypt, where we had our first Maker Fair in an Arabic-speaking country. The results of what might have been called a revolution. But it's actually caused them to channel that energy into things that they can do themselves, like make things or start a business. So it's, it's really interesting to be there and, and see that. But I think something that I see and, and connect to a lot around making it really isn't the technology per se, it's just the act of making and what it means to people. And the fact that we have a kind of freedom to make, creatively, to do things. And this is really what I want to share with kids, is, is this is a freedom to express yourself, such as music and art are forms of expression. So you can use physical things, you can use tools, you can develop skills, and, and develop technology. One of the things I, I think that we, if you think about what you see at Maker Faire, people are often using technology to interact with other people. It's just like playing a game. You have a, something that, that draws people to, together and to do things, and you initiate something and they do something in return, and you go on and on. I think, um, I think when I think of the impacts of the Maker Movement, I, I would kind of say three things. One is innovation. Um, we have lots of makers who are coming here with their first idea of a product, a prototype, and they're sharing it with people. Kickstarter told us last year that uh, there were over 100 maker projects here in the Bay Area that have collectively raised over $23 million on Kickstarter. It's really impressive. You can think of this as like a grand prize. But the prize money comes from the community that support the projects and, and give them a, a, a start. Um, but we also see the MakerBots and the drones and other companies that have grown out of the maker movement and become um, much larger, as well as seeing companies, larger companies like Intel and Microsoft begin to participate and bring their, uh, their makers and maker products and maker tools uh, to Maker Faire. As I kind of mentioned a minute ago, I believe the maker movement is going to transform our education system. Not just be plugged into the education system, not just have a curriculum for making in schools, but actually transform the way kids learn today. And it's almost as far away from standardized testing as you can get. Yeah. I don't understand why we don't pay attention to whether kids are engaged in school or not. Because most of them are bored. I once wrote an article and said, why isn't school more like summer camp? Summer camp, they don't want you to be bored. They have all kinds of things going on, and they want you to do stuff, keep busy, have fun, meet other people. In school, you can sit in your seat and be bored. If you're lucky, you doodle. And you become an artist. But, you know, we have to do something much better for our kids than what we're currently doing in most schools. I'm really happy to see a lot of schools here, a lot of kids here. We have a lot of young makers, and that's part of you know, when you see other kids making things, doing things, you want to get involved. And, and I used to call it my Monday morning problem. It's 
what happens when Maker Faire is over? And that kid has come here and, and been inspired to make things. He says, where do I go to become one of these people? Where do I learn how to make things? And it often isn't school. If parents are available to help. They can be a great resource. But we have to provide more in our community, not just in certain parts of the community, really in all parts of the community, to help young people gain access to tools and expertise and develop the ability to create and make and build and shape. And I don't care whether they use their hands or, or, or what so much with the physical things, it's really the mindset. We talk about a maker's mindset that it, it, they're really developing. And I think the third impact that we have here, and I think Maker Faire just celebrates this, it's, it's a maker culture. It's the creation of culture. It's the creation of meaning. It's, it's the acts um, and objects that Tell us who we are, what we believe in, what we care about. And um, it's wonderful to see that maker culture also reflect local culture, like cities and, and countries. But I think it also connects globally into something uh, much bigger than, than it had. I like to think that makers always, always existed, but many times they were by themselves. And what, the, what this maker movement is, is really connecting people together so they feel part of um, something larger than themselves. So, you know, we have kind of talked about Maker Faire. Um, you know, I, I'm really proud of this kind of slogan of the greatest show and tell on earth. Um, that's a fun way of saying what this is. You know, the, the thing that, when I think about what is the magic of Maker Faire, it's that my, me and my team really just provide this venue and organize it. Magic comes from all of those people who create and bring things to Maker Faire. And it really is this co-creation of the event. I always try to tell people, particularly some of the people from the art world and museums, that I don't go out and ask anybody to make something for Maker Faire. I want them to bring what they're already making, what they're already passionate about doing. And my continued delight, yesterday I just walked around and said, boy, I didn't even know that existed. I've never seen that before. <laughs> Who are you and where do you come from? And this is probably in your garage when it's not here at Maker Faire. So it just is a tapestry of all kinds of people doing incredible things. This is something I can do. I was really delighted. In the Fiesta, there's a, a, a thing called light play, and it's just sort of lights, uh, nodes moving around. The young woman said, I came as a graphic artist a couple years ago. I, was, I just loved being here, and I knew I had to contribute. I knew I had to do something. I started learning Arduino, and you know, now she describes herself as a hardware designer, and she developed that, which she says came to her in a dream, in her imagination, and then she made something that reflected that, and she brought it here to show and tell. I wanted to use this to talk a little bit to say, to someone, what's ahead of us? What's ahead for us? I mentioned we're going to have more Maker Faires, but you know the reason we have more Maker Faires is because it says we gave control over the community. It says we can't do all of them. We manage this one in New York, but lots of other people need to be involved in creating them as they are. So kind of kicking off a campaign that will launch a little bit later, the National Maker Fair, but I wanted to share it with you. Everybody makes, and that. That has been my goal behind Maker Fair, is to make this particular event and these events very popular so that we get everybody, not just a few people, not just the people that say, I'm a maker. I want the people who stumble in not even knowing what that means, who walk away saying, I want to be a maker, I want to get involved. And it's important, we think, in terms of our culture, not between you know, one and the other, but to be very inclusive and bring people in. And I want to talk about a few programs that we'll be, be launching. But Part of it, I want us to all think, not just of what we do to make ourselves happy, but how do we make the world better? How do we make it different than what it is? How do we imagine that? And how do we act on it? And I think the real power of the, of the maker movement is that it's people at a grassroots level just taking on, making, taking the initiative to do something, and to make the world better, really in, in smaller, large ways. So, you know, I want to say to you all, we can make the world better. We can make it better for you, for your community, and for everybody, if we're working together. I think some of the ways we already see this happening is makerspaces. We need makerspaces 
in schools and libraries. We have some of them in the community. We have tech shops and fab labs. We need more of them. We need them in the parts, in the areas of the community where young kids you know, are not not otherwise going to get that opportunity. We've written a, a playbook on how to create a makerspace. There's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of people here you can learn from. And it's wonderfully propagating. In the same way that Maker Faire is, we're seeing lots of makerspaces growing up around the world. We launched makerspace.com as a really almost like a network of makerspaces to be able to connect makers. When I visit makerspaces, you know what really upsets me? That I don't know what, I didn't know previously without going there what was going on in the space. I find really great projects, like that would be at a maker fair, but sometimes people don't talk about what they do. And so we have to continue. I want students telling us about their student projects, that they, you know, they had an opportunity to present to the professors, but they didn't bother to tell the rest of the world about it. We have in June, our, this year instead of White House Maker Fair, we're doing a National Maker Fair um, on June uh, 12th and 13th. And, uh, you know, we have this wonderful support, I, I think, from the White House, Office of Science and Technology Policy. Um, we have folks here from uh, agencies like NASA, Department of Energy, that are really looking for those very things that I say. You know, they're looking for innovation. They're looking uh, to engage young people in solving important and interesting problems. And so um, we'll be gathering makers from as many states as we can and uh, uh, bringing together in, in June. Um, we'll be launching Maker Camp. And if you don't know about it, we've been it for, um, we've done it for three years, this will be our fourth year. And again, just like Maker Fair, people step forward and organize affiliate physical Maker Camps. They say, I'm gonna do, our summer school is gonna be a Maker Camp, or our community center is gonna hold a Maker Camp. And we do some stuff to provide supplies and t-shirts and and ideas for projects, but they do the amazing work. And if you check out maker.com, makercamp.com, you'll see a wonderful video created by a young school. I, I, but I could not have produced a better video to say what the impact is on young people to see themselves as makers. We just are launching this week school maker fairs. And I'll say this, but don't quote me. I want to replace the science fair. It's boring, <laughs> right? It's a good thing that kids exhibit, but it doesn't have to be always constrained to follow the language of science. We want to combine creativity and science and anything that students are doing as projects. And so we have a new program for schools to easily just set up maker fairs. And I think this is the key thing is, is when we begin to see each other's ideas and creativity, it becomes infectious and kids begin to learn from each other um, and, and, and begin to um, follow and, and create on their own. So we wrote another uh, version of our playbook, a uh, smaller one, or it's aimed at schools. So we'll have maker spaces in schools, we'll have maker fairs. And this is almost a, intentionally a subversive act, you know, to get making into schools the right way. I'm not trying to say, hey, we're getting back in schools by following the standards that you're asking. We're going to go around you, and we're going to come in the side door, we're going to get parents involved, we're going to get kids involved, and we're going to change the schools that way. And so I think the key, though, is we have to see this as something that everybody is doing, and that we can work together. People in this room can join the people outside of this room and make things happen. And I'd like us to almost, in a sense, a transition to finding a purpose for what you're doing in making. Finding a goal, finding something in your community that you would like to change, something you would like to make better. And maybe you can't do it on your own, but as a small group, and perhaps even empowered by technology, you can accomplish this. So join us, join a movement, and help us make the change. We'll have another 10 years of Maker Fair ahead. Thank you very much.